to do with discrimination in the workplace. This is a va very valuable reminder for employers that you can't be too careful when you're advertising or recruiting for jobs. In this particular case, the uh, complainant to the WRC, a uh, girl or lady called Jess Quinn, she was awarded seven and a half thousand euros for discrimination because she was told, or at least she was, she claimed she was told by the company that the handling job, the manual handling job was only for men. So she brought a case for discrimination because she wasn't called for interview and she was awarded seven and a half thousand euros. She claimed, as I say, the company that she worked for told her that a position moving boxes was only for men. She's won seven and a half thousand euros for gender based discrimination. The company was SSL Limited, trading at Source and Supply Logistics Limited, and they have to compensate her for her complaint under the Employment Equality Act 1998. She was a temporary employee at the firm whose contract was coming to an end in March of last year. She decided to apply for a vacancy even after it was, or she was told that it was, quote, only for men. Because of the weight of the boxes, she told the WRC. Um, she was told on February of 20, last year, 28th of February, that her contract would expire at the end of the week and it would not be renewed. She and her colleagues were then told about the manual handling vacancy and she applied for it, it for that job. The job involved moving boxes weighing between 7 kilograms and 15 kilograms around the HSE building at Merlin Park University Hospital in Galway. She said that during a meeting with two company representatives she was told the job was only for men because of the weight of the boxes and that stairs would have to be climbed with the boxes. She said she told the company representatives that the restrictions were sexist and applied for the job anyway but she wasn't called for interview. She said two men she had trained were hired instead. She told the WRC that before she took the job at SSL, she drove a heavy goods vehicle and was lifting much heavier items than the boxes. The witness for the company, Pierce O'Donoghue, he was not one of the representatives noted by the WRC as having met Miss Quinn. However, he denied that the open job was only available for men. He said that a risk assessment was done. The outcome was that the work needed to be done by two people who were able-bodied and stronger, not necessarily male, just stronger. That was what he said. Although the use of lifting aids was considered for the work, he said it was not possible to bring them on to the HSE site. He accepted that there had been no assessment done to see whether Miss Quinn could lift the boxes without a risk of injury. He also added that Miss Quinn was asked to stay on another week so the firm could find her a new role, but she didn't want to stay. The adjudicator wrote, the respondent stated that whether someone was a male or female wasn't the issue, it was the person's capabilities in relation to lifting boxes. She wrote that Miss Quinn was informed by a company rep that due to the nature of the role and in line with the Health and Safety Authority guidelines on lifting, that only males would be considered. They did, did not ask the complainant if she was physically capable of lifting the boxes. They did not give her a trial run. They simply said she would not be suitable. That is what the adjudicator said at the WRC. She said, the adjudicator, that she was fully satisfied the worker had raised the inferences of, or the inference of discrimination on gender grounds and that the company failed to establish that there was no infringement of the principle of equal treatment. She ruled that the complainant was well or the complaint was well founded and awarded compensation of seven and a half thousand euros. So employers need to be careful, <coughs> excuse me, in how they handle uh, advertising uh, vacancies, how they fill positions, how they renew or fail to renew contracts and how they deal with both male and female, how they deal with strong people and weak people, how they look at jobs, etc. They need to be very careful in uh, relation to uh, recruitment because it can give rise to a claim for discrimination, a claim that might succeed as in this case with Miss Quinn. And remember, this is one of those unusual cases where the person who brings the claim is not actually an employee of the uh, respondent, of the employer. This uh, girl, this lady, Miss Quinn, was unsuccessful, remember, so she was no longer an employee Notwithstanding that, she could bring this claim on the basis that she was discriminated against in the recruitment process. Hope you find this video useful.
you do i'd appreciate if you give a thumbs up down below and maybe leave a comment if you like and if you're listening to this on my uh, podcast the irish law and small business podcast i would appreciate if you left a review either on spotify or itunes or wherever you might listen to your podcasts thank you